When you love somebody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Keith Allen. How are you, Keith? What's happening, guys? How you been, brother? It's been a while. The last been... time I talked to you, we were getting ready to do the um, Florida shows. I was going to come, but uh, I've been out of commission. I'm actually just returning to work tomorrow. I had back surgery in uh, the beginning of October. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but, uh, I, I saw the shows with the players and, uh, the players is you, uh, Jeff coffee, uh, my idol, Bill Champlin and, uh, John Paris from earth, wind and fire. And, uh, it looked amazing. Did you, did you have a good time? Uh, you guys are doing more shows, aren't you? Yeah, we got more stuff on the books for 2023. Um, we did four shows. Well, I guess technically five. Um, the first one we did with, uh, Tris on drums, which was sort of a last minute thrown together thing. Um, mm -hmm. and then we did, uh, yeah, like four more. It'd be good if we could string enough together where we could actually play the music without having to think about it too much. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, Keith, um, Keith, uh, no, it's been a lot of fun. I, I, I... I was sending stuff, uh, information for you, because I'm dying to get you guys in Atlantic City. Are you guys coming to Atlantic City? Is anything uh, happening with that? Uh, I was trying to get uh, some things with Atlantic City going with the players. Or any any hooks yet? Or what's going on? You know what? Um, I don't know about Atlantic City, but it sounds like a fun time to me. I mean, I'd, I'd love yeah. to play Atlantic City with the group. I mean, it, it's a really cool thing because we basically – sort of uh hand pluck um these great horn players out of the university of miami down here in yeah. florida which everybody coming out of that school is like a monster and yeah. um and then you got <clears throat> sort of an interesting melding of eras of chicago because you know i was there for the for the bill years and i was there for the jeff years but never yeah. really played with jeff and bill together and yeah. those two guys really seem to, they blend so well and vocally and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just the, uh, odd man out singing the bar baritone background vocals that, uh, um, well, although I, I, I might lobby, I might lobby for one, uh, uh, one lamb tune, uh, that I could sing, you know, because when I, when I was in the group, um, uh -huh. they kept asking me to sing tenor vocals, right? So, yeah. you know, at times I, I was singing old days and if you leave me now and the, but yeah. really my natural wheelhouse is more in the Robert Lamb realm. Oh, you know, I can kind of, I could sort of hold that down and then you got Bill doing the Bill thing and Jeff doing the Jeff thing and it, it works. And, and, and John is a, a monster drummer, as you probably know. Yeah. Uh, you know, now, let me tell you, uh, I, I got to make a, a request, maybe even a demand, Keith, because I am uh, okay. uh, very upset because not very, really upset. But listen, my favorite part of uh, different Chicago shows, first of all, the way uh, Jeff Coffey sings, you're the inspiration is uh, brilliant. And then Bill's backgrounds and his fillers in there that he does, you know, at the end, always on, you know, no one needs you more than I. And then your guitar solo. I said, the three of these guys together, I can't believe I was appalled that you're the inspiration isn't on the set list. Uh, I mean, the three, the three of you guys and the drummer, of course, but I mean, some of the best part, of, I mean, that you're, you're, we played that you coming in the show that your uh, guitar solo on you're the inspiration is it's fucking brilliant, man. Well, thank you. Um, you know what? I will, uh, I will put in a request for that because, <laughs> yeah. you know, with, within, within the group, um, you know, doing the David Foster stuff, the logical one was hard habit to break because it really is a, a legitimate duet between Jeff and Bill. Yeah. Um, so that was the one we chose of the the Foster era. But yeah. I have also come to realize that I don't have very many guitar solos in this show. I'm playing <laughs> yeah. solo on I'm soloing on Make Me Smile. I'm yeah. soloing on I believe a short solo in the middle of Look Away. And Bill is soloing on the outro. Oh, and yeah. then twenty five or six to four. 
And that's, yeah, that's the pretty much role. it. You got to do the year of the inspiration. I mean, that's my, that was always my favorite part of seeing a Chicago show. I mean, I, I haven't seen Chicago live since Bill left, but uh, when Bill was in Chicago, I mean, your guitar solo and then him at the end, just, you know, singing all the, no one needs you more than I do. Yes, I do. And he's, you know, doing all that crazy stuff in the background. I mean, I was like, <laughs> I loved it. It was, it was brilliant. He knows the lyrics, like Rob. It. You don't got to sing it. <laughs> I know, I know. I sound exactly like I, I'm just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Remember man. that part where you uh, sing like this? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, one of the amazing things about being in this band with, yeah. well, with both Jeff and Bill, but, yeah. but Bill, Bill in particular, I remember one time, I don't know if I shared this the last time we were on, um, but years and years ago, we were doing Color My World. Mm -hmm. And and Bill just started making mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake in the piano part. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, he just launched into, like, Kansas City, you know, a blues <laughs> tune, and yeah. just started singing it. And, and it was like, I love the fearless nature that Bill has of, like, I'm not, nothing is going to rattle me. I will power through anything. And the crowd yeah. freaking loved it. I mean, yeah. it was obvious that he completely... Oh, I thought you meant in rehearsals. This was live on stage? Oh, my God, no. This was in front of, like, 12,000 people. Wow. He was like... Kansas City. And he just, he just started going, and the crowd was like, yeah! The, the other guys in the band maybe didn't give him... Uh, so much fanfare, but hey, what are you going <laughs> to <Yeah>. do? <laughs> I know they really seem to to not like him. I watched that um, um, what was that last documentary, the last band on stage, and yeah. uh, they really went through. And what really uh, got me was at the end of it, the credits. They pretty much named almost everybody on stage that's ever been with Chicago and thanked them, from Chris Pinnock to Donnie Dacus to uh, the the fill-ins like Nick Lane. <laughs> And Bill was just completely left out. I mean, I said, wow. I mean, I was just, uh, I mean, they they really uh, seem to have, uh, and, and I get it. Me, people don't get along, and I, and I get it. There's bad blood there. But, I mean, Bill Champlin was a legendary part of Chicago. He was then there almost 30 years. He, he brought in David Foster uh, during 16 and was a part of that big pop with them and uh now it's like uh, they pretend the guy never even existed I yeah know. i mean i don't i don't totally understand it myself although um <clears throat> the circumstances under which he sort of entered the group um were kind of uh um you know less than um desirable it'd be kind of like uh you know chicago for all those years had been a one keyboard player band right yeah and and robert for reasons we won't necessarily discuss i think everybody knows it's all out there but did, he yeah. was unable to participate in making the um chicago 16 record because <clears throat> he was doing other things and so they hired bill and so I think that sort of was part of the, the you know, the rub there of that, yeah. you know, Chicago was never meant to be a two keyboard player band, even though yeah. it was for 30 some years, you know, or 40 years, however long it's been now, which, yeah, is, which, I, which I think is, which I think is funny because, you know, after Bill uh, uh, left the group, they immediately hired another second keyboard player. And then after yeah. Lou left, they hired another second keyboard player. Like, I'm glad okay. you said that. That's what I was just getting ready to say to you. I'm like, well, then why are they hiring? Uh, but, uh, you know, it's uh, it's just, uh, I mean, you know, you know Rob, Robert would be perfectly uh, capable of uh, uh, playing all the uh, Foster stuff. And, and they really don't need a second guy, except for the fact that, Usually that second guy is covering the sort of R&B soulful vocals of Terry Cat. 
So yeah. like if 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 I had in my throat uh Terry Katz uh voice box, yeah. it maybe wouldn't have needed a second keyboard player. Because yeah. then I could have covered all that, you know. I always yeah. thought that um if Stevie Ray Vaughan had had lived and survived, he would have been an amazing um addition to that band you know oh, and sure. not that i would have wanted to wish myself out of a gig but <laughs> if you listen to his you listen to his vocals and the way he played guitar i mean he was like a very uh harry cath-esque guy you know yeah so but now, uh, now keith you, i would have liked to have heard that yeah oh yeah now keith you were uh I mean, you were raised uh, by great parents, had a great family. Uh, you ended up becoming a, a musician, but your 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 parents said you have to give a get a college degree first, uh, right? And then you can be a musician. I I heard that when you were in college, that you Chicago ended up playing at your college back. I think it was when Bill Champlin first joined, and uh, uh, Chicago played at your college, and the person I talked to said that he didn't tell me the story, but he said you had a great story about uh, meeting Peter Cetera, the original tenor vocalist from Chicago. <laughs> when you uh, when you uh, when they were playing at the college. Yeah, so um, the band was on the Chicago 16 tour supporting uh, the new record that Foster produced. And Hard yeah. to Say I'm Sorry was actually not even a hit yet. Um, that's why they were still playing like colleges and smaller venues and whatnot. Because once Hard yeah. to Say I'm Sorry hit, then they started playing the bigger, uh, bigger venues again. But um, uh, God, I got a poster for it somewhere. I think it might have even been in late '81, not even in '82. Oh, wow. um, no, wait, no, that, that couldn't be possible because I graduated high school in 82. So it would have been early 82. Anyway, long story short, uh, you know, the band was just on fire. I mean, they were, you know, kicking ass and taking names because they were trying to trying to get back on the radio, trying to get their their audience back. And um and and me and a good buddy of mine uh, went and saw the show, and uh, it was probably the best Chicago concert I've ever witnessed from the other side of the glass. In other words, yeah. you know, yeah. being in the audience, and um, you know, Champlin was brand new, Lamb was 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 uh, clean and and great. Yeah. Satara looked like he'd been to a um, you know, some type of health farm, you know, he had the <laughs> bandana on and he was all fit yeah. and trim and, and Seraphin was on fire. Chris Pinnock was ripping anyway. So after the show, I went out and, and stood by the, uh, the backstage doors waiting for the band to come out. And the first thing I saw was I saw Chris Pinnock like kind of milling around by the by the double doors they were glass he was smoking a yeah. cigarette after the show and, and i remember thinking to myself man there's the that, that's the luckiest you know motherfucker in rock and roll right there he's got the yeah. guitar gig yeah. with chicago and i'm thinking wow this is this is really cool so you know and at the time of course this was not normal stuff to me later on i would learn about you know, the tour manager bringing the band out and putting them in the two bands and sending them off yeah. to the hotel. But anyway, yeah. everybody kind of gathered together. They came out, they got in the vans, and Satara got in the shotgun seat in one of the, the two uh, passenger vans. And I I sort of walked up to the glass, like, pretty close. <laughs> and he kind of, kind of looked at me, and he... It's back before electric windows, believe it or not. I think <laughs> oh, yeah, he had to roll the, the he had to roll the window down, and he's like, "Hey, man, what's up?" And I go, "How do you how do you sing so high?" 
And he looked at me and he goes, he looked at me and he goes, it's, it's just my voice, man. And he just cranked the window right back up. <laughs> Put the window back up. <laughs> totally blew me off. And, yeah. you know, I knew the answer, of course. I just caught in the moment. I had no no idea what to say to him. But, and who uh, do you think years later you'd be on stage with Chicago singing his number one hit? If you leave yeah. me now, this kid was uh, <laughs> knocking on the window saying, uh, "How do you sing so high?" Well, I mean, and if you want to get it, get in, get even a little more um, deep into it, um, and I don't know if it's still this way, but for a, for a long time, if you went on uh, Google and you just put in Chicago, if you leave me now live, mm -hmm. the top one that would come up was me singing it at the A and E live by request. Uh, and, yeah. And A and E live by request was about one week after I had started singing that song with the band, and uh, so basically I went from not singing anything to about four or five of Satara's tunes to being on live national television, um, you know, singing. I, I mean, I was freaking out, you know. Wow. And, uh, but uh, yeah, it was it's kind of a trip, man. I mean, you know. So years later, though, as, as you're in Chicago, you end up getting on a flight and you ended up, sitting next to Peter Cetera on a flight. Now tell me about this. Do you immediately, I, I know you immediately recognized him. Does he know who you are when you sit next to him, that you are the guitarist and background and sometimes lead vocalist for Chicago when he uh, sits next to you on the plane? Well, it was a little different than, than that. Actually, he, um, I was, I was in line. I think we were in Atlanta, and it was a short flight. It was about thirty-five minute flight from Atlanta to Nashville. And uh -huh. at the time, I believe Peter had a had a place in Nashville, and and I was living there as, as well. I was mm -hmm. coming off the road, so was he. And I I looked up and I saw him in line, standing up at the almost the front of the line. So I I um, um, both of us were in the first class cabin. Um, mm -hmm. I, I walked up to him before we got on the plane and I said, Hey man, I, I just wanted to say hi. Um, I don't know if you know who I am, but you know, I've been at the time, I think I'd been in the band for 20 years like that. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I, I've been the uh, lead guitar player for your ex wife for the last 20 years. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, how do you hit those notes so high? <laughs> yeah, we we we, to, we talked about that on the plane. He didn't remember that that one, yeah. but uh, but he did say um, he was like, "Oh yeah, man." He goes, uh, "You know, great to see you." And uh, um, so we got on the plane, and I was sitting in a window seat, and he was in the aisle across from me, and the guy next to me was you know some businessman, something was traveling. And mm -hmm. Peter actually was the one that asked the guy next to me if if he would trade seats with him oh, so wow. that we could chat. Oh, that's awesome. And that's I thought cool. That, I thought that was really cool. And you know what? You know what I learned in that half hour of talking to him? Some things I can't disclose or tell you about, but... Well, what you can <laughs> one tell of me. Things, <laughs> one of the things that I did learn was that he is absolutely, without question one of those guys okay i mean you know robert jimmy walt lee uh mm -hmm. danny peter they're they're kind of all the same guy they all got famous at whatever seven eight years old out of the mm -hmm. south side of chicago and you know i was sitting there talking to him and some of his mannerisms i'd be like wow that was that was kind of very Walt like, you know, or yeah. wow, that was very Jimmy like, you know, and and uh, he was very funny and he was very engaging and he was uh, very nice, you know. I I mean, I can certainly see, like I said, that he is one of them where 
you know, they, they've butted heads over the years because they all do. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. We, we, we talked about a bunch of, bunch of different stuff and he was, uh, pretty forthcoming with, with things. And, and I, I sort of have a knack for, for impressions. And uh -huh. I, I did a couple of my, uh, I did my best Walt Parasator and I had him, I had him uh, cutting up and, you know, falling out of his seat laughing. <laughs> to, Let's to hear it. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah. What was your Walt Parasator impression? Talking about the Jimi Hendrix story or what? <laughs> it's, uh, no, oh, but, <laughs> <laughs> let, out of, let me uh, out of out of respect for out of respect for Walt. I won't do that. He's yeah. Uh, uh, yeah I know. It. It, but now, now I'm talking to Chris. He's saying, "Ah, no, listen. Let him respect the guy." But let me ask you this, though, without being disrespectful, fast forwarding to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, everybody thought hell would have froze over before Peter Cetera would re re reunite with Chicago. It seemed like right. the. Yeah, uh, it seemed like, though, the wheels were in motion and that Peter Cetera, he was being inducted, whether he was there or not, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Chicago. You were there, um, which, I mean, uh, I'll sidetrack to this later. There's a lot of guys that have been with the band 20 years or more that, you know, should have been inducted with the band, but they were only inducting the original band that formed in 67. Uh, but Cetera... It looked like he was uh, considering and the band was talking to him about joining him on stage. And I remember being excited about this because I said, geez, Peter Cetera back with Chicago. Would have never thought that would happen. And then it comes to what they're going to sing. Peter Cetera wanted the key dropped for 25 or 6 to 4 in the band uh, we're right. doing. And I don't know where you stand on this, but my is like, who cares? Peter Cetera coming back, drop the fucking key. Like, I, I don't know. Like, what do you, uh, were you, were you, I, I know you probably weren't an instrumental decision, uh, you know, maker on this, but uh, as, as a, as the guitarist for Chicago, that's going to be there. What were you thinking? Were you thinking like, no, we can't desecrate 25 or six to four by dropping the key. Or were you like more like uh, some of the other fans were like, let's drop the key. Let's have the guy back on stage. It'll be a, a magical experience for fans. Well, here's the thing. And, and, and again, I, I would liken it to a, a divorced couple. Um, it wasn't about dropping the key, obviously. It was about control. Um, it yeah. was about, you know what I mean? It was like they they, they, they all kind of just pushed back on each other enough times where he finally threw his hands up and said, you know what, I don't, don't want to do this. Not, not worth yeah. my time. And, yeah, because um, didn't he even offer to sing "Feeling Stronger" every day in the original key, and that was uh, turned I, down, or I don't know. I think so. You know, he had been doing a lot of orchestra dates, and yeah. and had kind of a cool, that. kind of had a cool arrangement of twenty five that was down mm -hmm. in the key of E instead of A, and yeah, and it was it was way darker and slower and kind of. Um, but very cool. And, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't, you know, I saw Peter live probably two years after the rock and roll hall of fame. And he was hitting every note and all the notes that he would have needed to, to hit, to sing the song in the original key. So he didn't want yeah. to change it so much because he couldn't sing it. It was more like a thing where that's what, the way he had been singing it and um and and maybe a little bit in his head that maybe i can't hit those notes but you know it's it's a weird thing when you see a guy like that who is um still uh uh i mean i i noticed when we when we went and saw him um god this is probably only like four years ago maybe uh, yeah. My wife and I went, and uh, he changed the key on a lot of the songs, but then there were a few 
duets that he did with uh, Amy Grant and um, a couple other, which not all those yeah, artists were there, but Kim Keys would sing with him. And he left yeah, them in the I original it, keys. Yeah. And, he, and he was hitting everything. And it was like, wow, you know, it's like a metal block, you know. I, yeah. I don't know if I can run that fast anymore. Well, if you don't <laughs> believe you can, maybe you can't. But he, he was, you know, maybe in his head, he didn't realize he was hitting a, a C when he was, uh, you know, when he was singing Next Time I Fall, but didn't want to sing the C in 25 or 6 to 4, <laughs> you know, not realizing it was the same note. <laughs> were you uh, were you looking forward to playing with Satara? Was that something, or were you oh, uh, kind of neutral on it? You know what? You wanted to... I, I was I was freaking out when I heard that the band was going into the Hall of Fame. I, yeah. I, I thought to myself, "Wow, I'm going to get to more than likely play the guitar role with the six original members of Chicago." Yeah. And that was like flipping me out, right? I mean, it would have been Jimmy, Walt, Lee, Robert, Danny, Peter, and me. Yeah. Um, then I started hearing that the Rock Hall wanted to um, potentially put another Hall of Fame musician in the guitar chair oh, and, no. not, and, not, and not have me play. Kick now you've nuts. been in the band over twenty years at this point. Like, why? Why? Uh, well, just to make more of a spectacle out of it. Like, I think I, I heard rumblings of uh, Carlos Santana. Um, uh, you know, maybe Jeff Beck. Which you know, I'd love to see Jeff Beck play twenty five six four with Chicago, but not at the expense of me being on stage in right. the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So then when, but then when Peter kind of fell out, so it's kind of a weird thing because maybe um, had Satara done it, I would have, I would have been a spectator. So yeah. at least I got to perform and I felt like I, I held my own and um, it was great to get to play with Danny. Um, never having set foot on stage with the man. Um, when we went into rehearsals, uh, I remember we started playing uh, Saturday in the Park, and um, mm. you know, at this point, had we had Pro Tools rigs and click tracks and and mm -hmm. some background vocals in there and stuff like that. But when we went into rehearsal, you know, Robert just started kind of banging out Saturday in the Park, and Danny came in on drums, and it was like putting on an old you know, slipper. It just felt right somehow. It was like, wow, this is this this is the record. This feels like the record. And then of course yeah. then we stopped about, you know, a minute in and then turned on the click track and it changed the feel of the whole thing. Um which yeah. I was not exactly happy with but you know what you know wasn't my call you know that's the way uh much like they didn't want to change a key for peter they weren't gonna yeah. lose the uh click track for danny and wow. and you know and but i understand that that's the way the band the band at the time that's the way they were doing things and so we you know and and most bands do so we weren't we weren't going to change you know, just for one guy. And I thought Danny did a great job. He said it good, you know, felt good. Now you were, Keith, you can were I ask you a Chicago. question? Can, can I ask you a question? Uh, can I ask you a question real quick, Keith? Uh, some of the fans want to know if your chair says Chicago or Chicano. <laughs> Chicano? Why would it say yeah, Chicago? Chicago. Oh, it says Chicago. All right, Chicago. Uh, Hell yeah, that's man. A Chicago. A lot of fans have been asking. Yeah. Uh, wow. I, I got this chair for a, a, a gift back, uh, I don't know, five or six <laughs> years ago for, for Christmas. <laughs> now, but, can I uh, ask you something? Yeah, about, it's awesome, man. Can I ask you something about your departure? <laughs> and, and if you don't want to answer, just say, never. you know, just tell me. But uh, 
I, you broke your wrist at a Chicago show and, um, the, the guy, Tony, I I don't even know Tony, whatever, uh, stepped in. Oh yeah. And and took your place. And uh, they act like he just happened to be there. But then there was an interview that someone sent me recently with Lee, uh, Lee Lofnane. And he was saying that Tony was always meant to be in the band and that he was there that night to watch the stage set up and that they had been grooming him to be the guitar player for Chicago. And it just happened to be uh, like coincidence you broke your wrist which you obviously broke your wrist i'm not discounting that but they were saying they were already grooming why were they grooming another guitar player for chicago at this point and if you don't want to answer well well you know what i mean as far as i know um Mm -hmm. everybody had been asked to get an understudy for covid purposes um okay so that it if somebody got sick we had a guy that could just step in immediately and we wouldn't have mm-hmm. to cancel shows because you know you start canceling shows and you got breach contractors and a lot of money's being lost and um so everybody was was kind of getting an understudy mm-hmm. and um i was kind of dragging my feet on I had a guy, mm-hmm. and um, but I hadn't really gotten him up to speed and gotten the information to to Lee and the management. And so mm-hmm. I guess Lee went and found a guy who had played in Stara's band, uh-huh. and on his own accord went ahead and had Tony uh, prepare to learn the show, and uh-huh. um, uh, in case something happened to me and you know the irony of it is is that he lived in nashville and we were playing in louisville which is only about two hours away so he had driven up to watch the show just to get a better idea of like the stage set up and how that all works and i broke my arm two hours before the show and he just happened to be there so it was fate you know and um um, I was literally, you know, I was talking to Lou Pardini going, well, maybe you can cover some of the guitar parts. And Lee just came over and said, you know, Hey, um, you know, Tony Obrada is here. Um, I've had him learn the show. Can you go up and show him how his, how your rig works? <laughs> and so uh, I'm like oh. holding my, Broken arm wow. going, okay, so bank one, preset one is a clean sound, and bank three is more vintage sounds, and the face shifter is up here, and the flanger mm-hmm. is over there. And then they put me in a town car and sent me home. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, arm. man, it was, uh, it was a real, um, I had, I had my suitcase. And it was packed full of um, electronics and probably weighed 70 pounds. And I was, um, uh, I showed up at the venue early. So I wanted to, I, I took an Uber over. So I had my suitcase with me. And I was, you know how you take a suitcase with the, the handle pulled up? Oh, yeah, and you yeah. you just kind of yeah. lower it down each step, oh. you know. And it got about five steps down away from me. And when it dropped to like the sixth step, it pulled me off the top of the flight of stairs. And my arm was in, my arm was inside of the handle and it just snapped it. So, and that's, and that's, and that's the last time I'm, uh, you, you before that, I mean, going to that show, you you've never played with Chicago since. You just uh, after that, you decided to uh, to separate. Yeah, with- I mean, you know, it was it was kind of a um, it was kind of a, a god shot in a way because I sort of I sort of thought to myself, you know, when I was when I got home, 
And I've been on the road for almost 27 years and probably for about eight months a year out of every year. And I've missed almost every birthday, every anniversary, um, kids graduating from high school, from middle wow. school. Um, and I just kind of thought, you know what? I'm not going to be able to play for probably six months anyway. Yeah. Might be, time, might be time for a change. And they were out there soldiering on with with Tony, and he was doing a great job a great job and um so you know it was kind of a mutual parting of the yeah. of the ways you know i mean i don't hold any any animosity toward those guys at all i as a matter of fact you know i'm i'm grateful and i mean i pretty much got to check every box um that i had on my list of like you know when i was 20 years old and i was like gee, I want to be a musician when I grow up, you know, and I got to check pretty much all the boxes. And, I think uh, the cool part is, is that you went from what you went from watching that concert, standing behind the building, watching them saying, wow, that guy has the coolest fucking job to having the coolest fucking job. And, and so right, was there ever any point in your career when you was coming out of a building and you looked around and seen somebody you know, like in the crowd, because usually after the show, there's people always out back and stuff like that. Did you ever look around and think, God, I was that guy one, one at one point? Oh, absolutely. And it, and it certainly, um, you know, I was very, very mindful of the fact that, um, you know, if somebody came up to me and was gushing with some kind of praise or, you know, sometimes, it, you know, I would not feel like I had a good night and mm -hmm. some, somebody would come up and be like, man, you're, you, you played so great. And I learned a long time ago to just say thank you and not argue with them because it, yeah. it, 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 yeah. it doesn't do anybody any good for me to go like, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, kid. I suck yeah. tonight. You know, <laughs> I, I blew this part in here and I, you know, I broke a string there and, um because you're you're almost diminishing their you know hey man how do you sing so high yeah <laughs> you know? so, I don't, well talking i, I didn't want to be say, that talking guy. about not, checking not, that, not not that pete not, not that peter was rude but he was yeah. just kind of like it was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. next question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, talking about checking all the boxes, you made that. You were uh, part of the band for like 27 years almost. And uh, you had, how, how many, I was wondering, how many of those moments where you had those pinch yourself moments? You know, you toured with bands like, uh, you're touring with uh, John Paris of Earth, Wind & Fire. I love Earth, Wind & Fire. I like Cool and the Gang. What is, what, what is a moment you can point at and say, wow, I made it because I'm here playing this and this, this is why I'm doing this. Do you have any of those moments you can think of? There's a ton of them. Um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. Um, we played several times for um uh president clinton we did his uh we did his library opening we did a uh a, a show for so him. did monica <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's good we played at the ford theater for him before he was uh, nominated or elected um you know, I mean, oh my God, the tours with Earth, Wind, and Fire sold out at Madison Square Garden, the LA Those Forum. Were the best. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, three nights sold out at the Hollywood Bowl with the uh, LA Symphony when Jeff was in the band. Those were like, that was like unbelievable. Um, you know, and then there was a lot of, lot of TV stuff, you know, we did. Tonight Show several times, Today Show, Good Morning America, Rosie O'Donnell. Um, never did get to do Letterman and never did get to do SNL, which I wish we would have. But um, wow. they had moved yeah. on to 
They you did Leno, though. Yeah, you did the Tonight Show. Oh, yeah, with Leno. Yeah. Not Carson, um, do you think Leno. that... Yeah. Do you think that maybe down the road that you and the other band members, even though you guys don't get along very well, I mean, as far as everybody in the group getting along, do you think that you all can at one point agree that uh, the Doobie Brothers are assholes? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys played with the Doobie Brothers, haven't you? Oh, shit. Wow. Oh. Um, a couple of those guys are my my good friends, and uh, they're they're definitely anything but assholes. They're they're good dudes. Uh, and Michael McDonald is probably one of the most unassuming, um, humble, um, nice people you ever want to meet. There's no rock star, and that's that's kind of part of what uh, um, I think is kind of cool about those guys. It's like it's like Chicago can never get it together with Peter. To do a show together, only one show, the Rock and Roll Hall thing, yeah. anything, and the dupes seem to be able to like, yeah, come on back, McDonald, you know, and he'll come back, yeah. do even a tour with them, and then leave again, and you know they don't all agree on everything, and you know, no, Pat Simmons, uh, not Pat Simmons, but Tom Johnston wasn't really happy about the direction the band took when. McDonald showed up, but um, but they still, you know, managed to be cool with each other and 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 respect what what each other does. So you know, I respect that out of them. Yeah, I, I was uh, kidding about the Doobie he, Brothers, but uh, Steely Dan, fuck <laughs> those guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I don't, uh, Keith, as the <laughs> as uh, Keith, as the holiday approaches, uh, I, I put the clip up, and people seem to love it. I uh, of the Chicago Christmas album. That's the only Christmas album I listen to. I love it. And your arrangement on "Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas." I talked about. It. I know I joked and said, "God bless the uh, the cold virus that infected your body to where Bill sang it." But uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> it's just my. It's my. It's my favorite Christmas arrangement. Uh, I heard a story and. and I, I don't know if you can confirm this or, or deny it, but that when you were recording that ori original uh, Christmas album, the next door Black Sabbath was recording. And from what I heard, Ozzy Osbourne was over and like fascinated that you guys in a hundred degree weather in April were recording Christmas songs. Is that, uh, is that true? It was, it, was, what are you doing? <laughs> it was, it was actually closer it was closer to July, I believe, and yeah, we were at. Um, I want to. I want to say we were at A and M Records, and and all of a sudden, right in the middle of, I think Jason might have been doing a vocal on Silent Night, and uh, we're sitting in the we're sitting in the control room, and they got the Christmas lights like all, you know, over the um, control room windows and the whole thing, and all of a sudden, you know. All of a sudden, Ozzy just comes busting into the control room right in the middle of a take. He basically took the room over for about an hour. And uh, Roy Brunner was produced. And, and we just He's sat there. He's had a Christmas in July. Yeah. He got, yeah, I fucking quit drinking. Uh, you know, I don't fucking drinking. You know, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's fucking cigarettes. Are more, this is more of a bitch than the alcohol. I can't, I can't fucking stop with this. You know, Merry Christmas to you guys, though. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, that's a pretty, the, that's the, a pretty good impression. You would just I come gotta, to see if you had the bad on, dude. That is, yeah, that is a great yeah. impression. That's a great, yeah. that's a great impression. Fucking spot on, man. <laughs> Christmas in July. The, yeah. the prince, the uh, prince of darkness, the prince of darkness came in and overtook our. Our Christmas album sessions. You know? <laughs> that's a that's so, a that's fucking, fucking awesome. that's a fucking concert I would go to. Chicago and Black Sabbath together. <laughs> Holy shit! What a concert that would be. And hey, Chicago. We, should, we probably should have had Ozzy do "Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas." You know, oh I'm shit! A merry oh, fucking Christmas. the jingle bells. One, two, three. <laughs> a merry <laughs> fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then Holy instead, shit, uh, you, you could have done the backgrounds going, fucking Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Time. I, think someone, I think somebody might have been singing that in there, and I'm guessing it was Bill. Jason, oh, and, Jason and Bill, <laughs> uh, true, true story, if you listen real close, and um, uh, walking in a winter wonderland, you know, Jason and Bill uh -huh. were like, they were just always cutting up in the studio. And so they were, uh -huh. I believe there is one or two spots where, and it's a big stack of vocals, so you can't really hear it. So the background vocals going, walk in, walk in. Um, yeah. Something, something we're walking, walking, Christopher walking, walking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to listen for that in headphones oh, shit. now. Oh, no. <laughs> we uh -oh. lost him. He he going. That was his, that was his yeah, closer. He's, that was his headline. Yeah. yeah. He's he's here. Here. yeah. Mic drop. Oh, there oh, he is. Oh, there. We thought we lost him. Man. We thought you were Christopher walking on us. You know what you know what that was? That was John John Paris was trying to call me. It made me drop the call. Uh, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> so you're, like, you about you're like, I'm too busy. I'm on the Rob Saul show. Yeah. Let That's me ask right. you about John Paris too, as well, because the players, I mean, what a, what a lineup because, you know, I know originally there was a plan for bus number two, which was, you know, you, Lou Pardini, Jeff Coffey and Tristan Bowden to go out there and, you know, start doing stuff, making new music. Lou Pardini somehow ended up, uh, thank God, because I'm, you know, I'm fucking crazy about Bill. So Bill Champlin's in there now. And uh, you guys, it's pretty much that with Jeff Coffey and uh, and you. But John Paris is still on Earth, Wind, and Fire. So if you guys book some shows and and uh, John Paris is, you know, booked with Earth, Wind, and Fire, do you have a, uh, a drummer lined up? Well, <clears throat> you know, I've got a Rolodex of drummers. Um, but uh, yeah. You know, actually, we were, we were actually talking about that um, just today because a, a couple of um, couple of gigs came up for July, and um, John's not available in July, so we were <clears throat> just tossing around different different ideas. Um, you know, Ed Toast. I have an idea for you. What is that? <laughs> Oh, I, I, well, it's an obvious idea. I mean, is uh, come on, is uh, would Tris be willing to do some show? Yeah. You know what? I mean, um, yeah. I I I don't <laughs> know for sure. He he yeah. did the actual first real yeah. players gig that we did, which was yeah. uh, it was thrown together real last minute, but um, the. And not to get too deep into it, but the um, the promoter kind of uh, stepped on the trademark of the band a little bit um, mm -hmm. by using the band's logo, Chicago logo, and we got oh, a little yeah. bit of um, we got a little bit of pushback from it um, from yeah. the band, um, and so Tris kind of just was like, you know what, man, I I can do my I'm doing my yacht rock rock thing and. Maybe I don't necessarily, you know, want to push that yeah. envelope over here. Um, yeah. But we have but since I mean, that sort of. Well, we've we've since sort of ironed all that stuff out, and yeah. you know, we've got all kinds of documents that promoters have to sign, and we will not use the yeah. logo, and we won't, we won't, you know. It's always the it promoter that fucks up stuff. Mark, well, you know, so uh, I don't know, you know, um, I, I would love for Trish to play. I mean, I, he's one of, my, one of my favorite drummers in the world. And I, I, would, I mean, I would, that is just a version would, of, of Chicago. I, and not that you are Chicago, but I mean, you know, no offense. And I, you don't have to respond to that. The lineup of Chicago, I would never. It's just not my my thing. But seeing the players, even without Tr but Tris would be just uh, to me, that would just be like such a f fucking awesome lineup of just greats and not even just the Chicago, but just musicians, uh, you know, that uh, have all worked together yeah. and have a connection. 
And Rob uh, is uh, have- Rob is actually Tris's new manager. I don't know if you know that. Yes. So he's like, you guys. I <laughs> I have I have quality I have quality problems in that uh, you know if it's not John Paris who is like one of the best drummers on the earth um, it might be Tris it might be Ed Toth from the Doobie Brothers it could be Brian Dunn from Hall and Oates it might be um, uh, 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 Sonny Emery who used to play with Earth Wind and Fire who is now playing with uh, Eric Clapton. So I mean, we got a lot of guys that we can, a lot of guys that we can yeah. pluck from, that do have connections to Chicago or Earth Wind or, um, you know, and who knows? You know, I don't, I don't know what what what, what exactly is going to happen. But like, if we, you know, let's say let's say John Paris can't do it, and Brian Dunn can, maybe we do a handful of Hall and Oates tunes in the show. You know. Because he brings yeah. that into the equation. He also was an average. And Daryl Hall band. and Bill Champlin have that similar uh, vocal style to where Bill can do a, a Hall and Oates song. I can imagine very well. Uh, Bill told me that he and he and Daryl on, on a couple things uh, did some background vocal dates together and said it was like yeah. really amazing because their phrasing and stuff was so sort of yeah in alignment. You know, Daryl has a much more um, clear kind of tenor voice, and Bill is more, a little more baritone um, R and B. You know, a little, yeah, little gritty. raspier. But the yeah. blend of those two guys would be, or apparently was, great. You know, I well, mean, yeah, they have a song. Uh, there's a song off of Bill's first solo album called "Single," called "We Both Tried." And Daryl Hall does backgrounds on it, and it is a uh, uh, beautiful. I have it on vinyl. I have it on my uh, see. It, yeah, it's called uh, "Single." Is my favorite Bill Champlin album. It's like '78, and uh, yeah, yeah, there's a song called "The Ballad" called "We Both Tried" with Daryl Hall singing on it with him, and it's. I mean, it is just smooth oh, and I beautiful. Mean, and if I remember correctly, I think the rhythm section on that record was. <laughs> Uh, mostly the Toto guys. You had Jeff Ricaro and David Hungate and Lukather. Um, yeah. And then also there Foster was... Uh, it. Foster produced it. Yep. I think... Uh, I'm not sure if... Uh, not sure if Paige played on it, but I'm, I'm sure David played keys on it. Yeah, it's yeah. a great record. I mean, that if you listen to single and then you listen yeah. to Chicago 16, you can kind of hear... Yeah the natural progression of Bill and David and then their influence on what became Chicago Foster. Well, uh, and then you had Runaway. Runaway was like uh, released almost uh, in the same time frame of, uh, of, of Chicago 16. And uh, he kind of put that on that. That could have been a, a big record, I think, but you know, right after that, it came out, he, he, he went into Chicago and Chicago 16 blew up. Yeah, and um, oh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, there was a lot of cross pollination going on right around right around that early '80s period where the the Toto guys were working were kind of Foster's guys, and you know, you go and uh, you had um, uh, the Tubes. Uh, She's a beauty. You know, Bill and Bobby Kimball are on the background vocals in that. You can hear them clear as day. Um, uh, who else did he do at that point? There were so many records. Time guys were all interchangeable. Um, the Chicago Horns played on the Bee Gees record. The Bee Gees sang on the Chicago records. They were like, you know. You go across the hall and knock on the door and go, hey, you want to come over and sing on our stuff? That's why I was saying. We should have had Ozzy sing, sing a Christmas tune. That would have yeah. been, that would have been yeah. Yeah. Keith, can you yeah, sing Keith. something for that us, man? Yeah. Can Keith, you sing uh, something for us? Anything? Anything? Oh, Just something small? <laughs> oh, jeez. Everybody I in the chat's asking. Uh, I didn't ask Keith to perform no. tonight. 
Usually I let you guess. No, it's yeah. totally fine. I, talk, I thought you were talking to me, Chris. I'll, I'll, what do you want to hear, bud? Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Uh, let me hear <laughs> some Steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, Keith, uh, listen. Uh, Keith, you um, not only, I mean, your arrangements are brilliant. You're, you're a good, uh, a great songwriter, too. I told you I'm a big fan of Back to You and all your Christmas arrangements. And then you have Bill Champlin, who writes songs. Jeff Coffey. Great singer, right song. Anything uh, we can look forward to of some, an album? Like, uh, has it been discussed with like the players, with like whether it be Tris or John Paris as the drummer, uh, but the three of you guys uh, recording an album? Bill Champlin, Jeff Coffey, and Keith Hallen, because man, the, the, I mean, the vocals between those two guys and your guitar work, I mean, that, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you know, um, it's it, it's already being discussed. I mean, for sure. I mean, right now we're just trying to get some gigs booked and and uh, kind of get get this thing kind of moving along. Um, but yeah, recording is definitely a real uh, real possibility, um, and it could be any number of combinations of people too. Because you know, we've talked about it could could be the players with. Um, with J JP and, and, and Bill, or it could mm -hmm. be Tris and Jeff and I, uh, we even talked about maybe doing a trio, uh, like a power trio thing. Like, um, I don't know if you know, remember when, um, uh, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, John Mayer did the John Mayer trio and it was uh, oh, yeah. him, Steve Jordan and Pino Palladino. And they did like a live album. Um, He's done more than a really trio. Cool. <laughs> What's that? John Mayer's done more than a trio. Oh, oh yeah, but he did. He did <laughs> do a trio record. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's being, <laughs> right <laughs> He's being yeah. dirty. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so you know, there's talk about that too, and I, I, I thought it was kind of ironic when I thought about it. If you take the first letter, <laughs> if you take the first letter of uh, Jeff and my and Triss's last names, you get C H I. Chai. Wow. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, shit. Getting close to the copyright on that one. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, you could I'm just call it Chicano. Call it Chicano. <laughs> I'm telling you, and then you're nah, safe. I'm <laughs> nobody, you. nobody has that name. Nobody has that as a band name. So you could be C H I Cano. Chicano. No, I listen. Well, call it and, chic. And, and call it chic because I want well, Champlin at the end of that. <laughs> you add you add Champlin to it, you get chic. And and, and but I think there's already a band named that. But um, oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I've always thought Chicano is a very funny name um, <laughs> because it it does denote not Chicago. Chicago. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no yeah there you go there you go yeah but uh, uh anyway i like it well yeah, Keith, man. you have uh, listen i i am so glad that i got you on the show uh we had you on with jeff and i said uh, there were so many questions that i had for you that you know we were just going over the show and i said i gotta have this guy back on and i'm glad yeah. i did because you've been You've been so open and honest about everything, and I appreciate that. You know, I know some of the questions may have been a little uncomfortable, but you're just like open and honest about. Why are you it, looking at me, Rob? I, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I appreciate that, buddy. I mean, is, uh, before we before we uh, go, because I don't want to keep Keith on too long. Is anybody else uh, down here in the crew here have any questions for Keith? I know I've been, you know, taking over the show here, but. Uh, yeah, I got a question well, for him. Uh, yeah. Is Rob dying? How does he get such big gets on his show? Is this like a Make a Wish <laughs> yeah. situation going on? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who the? F I mean, Jesus! I didn't even think Rob even. Uh, yeah. We no idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, <laughs> wasting your time with this guy. No, yeah, no I'm good. Thank you for that. being here. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hey, no worries, guys. Uh, you know, I hope I was able to answer your questions and not not get legend. in this too much trouble <laughs> no i no, i dude, not you're too, legend. I in trouble but you're very honest and open and i appreciate that and you weren't disrespectful no. to anybody too so 
So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, it's, you're you're very as honest as you could be, and uh, without being disrespectful to anybody, um, the players have a website where they can keep track of uh, shows going on. What is that? That's it's theplayershow.com? dot com. You know what? You know better than I do. I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and think and and, the and, there, and there's a there's a Facebook page too for the yeah. players. Um, so go like that. I'm yes. pretty positive we're doing a gig in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida in uh, God, I, the date escapes me, February 10th, maybe, 9th or 10th of February. Um, that's a real nice theater there in uh, St. Petersburg, and we're going to try and put some stuff around it. Because, uh, nice. you know, Jeff's down here in Orlando, and I'm, I'm in Tampa. Um, Tris is actually over in Fort Lauderdale. So a lot of us nice. are in Florida, and, um, of and then of course Bill and and uh, John are in L.A. But hey, man, Southwest, you know. <laughs> yeah. Keith, I want to get an that. autographed guitar from it's, you, man. I'll purchase it. I want to. I want to get a guitar from you to put on my wall. Will you sell Chris Abel's a uh, autographed guitar? Yeah. Uh, he, he, I'll really buy one. This guy's got money. I, he's got more money than me. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'll buy it. I'm I'm serious. I want to put that in my collection, man. Yeah. Well, bring it bring it on out. I'm I'm happy to sign yeah. it. I'll sign it. Awesome, man. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, it's it's the players the players show dot com. Uh, T h e the players show dot com and uh, all of the gigs will be posted keith halland uh legend i mean really my my yeah. time frame was seeing chicago you were the guitarist for chicago um you know you you came on right after Dwayne bailey i'd never seen any of those live shows but uh i mean it was always just the highlight uh, of my childhood uh, teenage years to go see chicago with uh with you guys you and bill and and jason um and Tris, so thank you for coming on this program and uh, talking about your career and everything with us. And I hope to see you soon. I'm going to keep still pushing and and bugging Jeff and giving him email addresses to get you guys in Atlantic City because uh, I'm uh, I'm dying. That would to be great. Stuff. Yeah, but uh, uh, thank awesome. you. Uh, yeah, I, I I would love it. So, and I'm sure everybody else uh, would want to see these gigs around. So, uh, keep your eyes peeled. Theplayershow.com. Uh, Keith Allen, thank you very much. Yeah, brother. Thank you guys. It. All right, it's been a blast. Yes, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Keith. Allen.